Hello everyone, it's Christine here and I am back to share my final video for the project for the month of May for Roxy's Journal of Stitchery, which was a slow stitch box. Now I made my slow stitch caddy um, and then this was my other project which was a um, house shaped slow stitch box with lots of hexes and clam shells and just this beautiful fabric from Three Sisters from Moda. Um, and I've had such a ball making this and I know some of you have been inspired to make it so I wanted to come back and show you the final um, steps and my final thoughts about how I'm going to have it but with a few other options as well for how you might like to have your roof piece. So let me just um, pop the roof on for a moment and give you a bit of a look at how the roof has ended up. So I've got my clam shells. Um, I did the decorative stitching around the edges of all of those. Um, I have um, enclosed the ones on this side. I just put some backing um, fabric on and folded that under and then have just stitched the edges of that. I haven't done that on um, this side. I'll probably just leave that side as is, um, but I can come back and do that. Um, and then I've put this lovely um, lace. I've got a few different colours of it, but I used, which one did I use? That one, um, the more yellowy one, because I thought it went well with the yellow tones. Um, and I've put that along the roof. I've only stitched that onto the two ends here because I want to have that as a little handle that allows my roof to be lifted off. I've decided to leave my roof... Um, attached so that I can get full access to my box um, but I'll talk in a few moments about how you might want to stitch it on if you did want to have an attached roof to yours. So that's um, yeah the two sides of the roof that you can see there and yeah I think that's a fun little feature with a handle and what I did with my two roof sections was I um, first of all stitched along each of the the sides as you can see just with a little overcast um, stitch and then I stitched my two um, roof pieces together um, I just had it sort of sitting like this and put the stitches in while they were um, angled down like this and then I stitched my piece of decorative ribbon on and then, as you know, on the inside I was using um, some coordinating fabric and I just used my beautiful vintage greeny, olivey, sort of coloured, goldy coloured. It's yeah, really hard to tell the colour of this. I actually misplaced it and I was like, oh no, I don't have one that exactly matches. I had a wool, wool one that was a very similar colour, um, which I had actually started using, but it's a bit more, it's just got a little bit more fluff to it. Um, so yeah, you can just see the stitches along there. And then I have added a little bell because I thought it would be really cute to have a little bell sitting above the doorway and the front of the house and that when the roof gets lifted off you get a little jingle um, of the bell or when the roof goes back on it's like someone's at the door. Uh, so that is the roof section. And then this is the body of the house. So I had in a previous um, video showed how I was using the ladder stitch to stitch up the walls. I ended up using an overcast stitch. And what I did, let me just pop the bottom out for now. Um, what I did was just put the two sides together like this and then did my overcast stitch in a coordinating um, burgundy coloured uh, thread. I'll put my oops, iPad sliding down move iPad out of the way while we're doing the video. Um, I can't see where my little burgundy thread has gone but yeah a coordinating burgundy colour. Um, so that's the way I did all the walls um, and I'd previously shown how I was overlapping my little hexy pieces from each of the sides um, and overlapping them onto the the backing piece which had um, is felt wrapped around cardboard so you can see that in previous videos. Um, I haven't yet made an, a playlist just for this project but I'm going to do that so I'll link that in the description below so you can see all the videos. So I had wonderful suggestions about um, how people thought I should do the front of the house so I took the idea of um, expanding the size of the door um, so I've got that brown lace I originally had and then I painted up um, some of this braid just looking to see if it's here yes some of this braid that I got vintage braid from the sewing layer so I just painted that um, and then I trimmed it down 
And this just shows how you can kind of, um, yeah, use braids in different ways. So what I did was, and let me just sit this down like this. Um, I trimmed it so that I just had one section essentially like like that and I was just putting little cuts through um, where the little connections were and then I just um, stuck it down and just stitched it on at key points to hold it in place. I had the windows that I had previously painted so I like that they kind of um, colour coordinate and I think they go quite well with some of the golden colours in, um, in the roof section as well. Just move that out of the way for a moment. Um, I added some of these little flower um, appliques and I, in fact I probably need to put a couple more little stitches down the bottom so I can always show you how to how to do that particularly when you're stitching into it when it's all together and then I had my end piece here which I did the did some ribbon embroidery with you on and then I added a whole lot more and definitely it works very well to use the friction marker to mark on where you want to um, stitch I probably need to put a tiny little stitch through that one because that little rose has become slightly unwrapped but not a problem and I just yeah did them all different sizes so they have that that sort of realistic variation that you'd get with a plant and I just love it I love that this one looks almost like a heart up here and I just love that yeah it, this isn't um, symmetrical here because a plant's not going to be symmetrical but just yeah I think the ribbon ribbon work has worked fabulously I had this side which had all of my little star shapes on it um, and that's yeah that's come out really great it held them down beautifully there was only a couple at the edges where I just had to put a few extra stitches in where there was a bit of stretching um, occurring as I stitched it all together this one I think you had seen in its entirety so just um, thread stitching same technique as um, the ribbon in the sense of um, yeah doing the same stitch but obviously different because um, using the uh, thread or the wool I think this one was this a wool or a thread I can't even remember what I used there and then I was just doing little French knots for the flowers here whereas for the flowers over here I used a few different um, yeah techniques to get that little sort of rosy rosy effect so they are the, the four sides. I love that they are each different. So if I want to sort of turn this around where I have it on display in my craft room, um, yeah, they're different. And then on the inside, you might remember I was um, struggling to think, oh, I used up all of my fabric um, for these two pieces here, which is the smaller design. It's a bit hard showing you now because everything's um, stitched together. And then I remembered I had the bigger design. So that's what I use. So it's totally coordinating, but it's a slightly... Um, bigger design and I think that goes beautifully and then it goes well with the um, base piece which is that bigger design again and so for the base piece what I did was I didn't measure this one out until the end when I was um, finished stitching this together and what I did was traced around um, using my friction marker onto a piece of cardboard around inside I then squared it up with a ruler and put a tiny bit more on in terms of size and then I wrapped that with felt and wrapped that with um, fabric and I've done most of the stitching I've actually got just a little bit which we can just do together I'll just show you how I um, stitched that um, and then made sure before I just started the stitching that it was about the right size because I wanted to just be able to sit down into the box um, because I'm not really planning to move this box around I'll just have it sitting somewhere and access things out of it um, I don't think I need to stitch it on if you did want to stitch you could go around the whole base um, and stitch it in I'd probably just inset it um, a tiny tiny bit but otherwise I think that will work work perfectly um, and then having the little the bell will be the front so that's how I'll remember where the the front of the house is and that then just um, yeah it sits onto the onto the top now if you did want to have it stitched on rather than just being able to lift it off I would probably suggest that you stitch it on um, at the center point and then you could have it so that you can flip either side of the roof up the other option is you could stitch it on down here but I think then you'd probably want to stitch it um, down there and there and there and there. Um, and then you'd only be able to open it and access one side of it. I'm planning to use it to keep 
my um, hexi and English paper piecing templates in um, and I think it's going to be perfect um, for that I think I'll be able to keep all my little and some of my little projects as well that I've got some exciting things that I will share um, I haven't accessed a lot of um, or used a lot of these things yet I've got like the template I use for my clamshells which I think can just um, wrap around in here and yeah that will be a perfect place to keep all my English paper piecing things is what I am thinking so I'll take those out for now um, but yeah as you can see the bottom doesn't if you make it a nice tight fit um, it will actually just stay within the piece um, so I might do the stitching on that first and then I've got some other ideas of if you didn't want to do all your English paper piecing from scratch one you could just create this using just some lovely um, fabric that you had for example if you had some beautiful um, tapestry like fabric or Sanderson fabric or something like that um, you could absolutely and you could even do some thread painting into the wall pieces before you um, put them onto the cardboard um, I would suggest you do do it the way that I did where I backed um, I backed the inside fabric or even with these pieces I backed it onto a piece of felt to then stitch into it like when I was doing these French knots and that just gives it a bit of substance and stops it puckering and also then gives you a bit more fad, um, padded I was going to say fatted, padded consistency when you're you're putting it together. So yeah, well, let's first of all just stitch our little bottom piece. I'll just show you how I'm doing that. I'll bring the camera down. So close your eyes. Sit down. I wanted to show you this in daylight, so I've had a little lunch break. Not having my lunch today. I'm doing a video instead. So that you can see it in daylight with less shadows, hopefully. So I hope you had a lovely weekend. We had a beautiful time on Phillip Island yesterday. We went to the winery. Travis came with us, had absolutely delicious pizzas. I'll um, pop some footage at the end of, yes, a couple of the little beaches we visited. Um, some pictures of our yummy lunch. Um, no doubt some video footage of, of Travis. Um, and yeah, it was it was beautiful, delicious pizzas, some fries with our pizzas, um, and yeah, some lovely little beach walks. So what I've done um, with this piece is yeah, I'd covered a piece of cardboard with felt, um, overlapped the felt slightly, so it sort of got padded edges, um, and then wrapped it with fabric, um, folded these ends in first and then folded over this piece along here and folded it over so there's no raw edges and I've now stitched along here, stitched down here and I just need to finish doing the final stitching down this bit. I am going to move you up a bit because otherwise I will go off camera I am sure. And so I'll just um, cut my little end tail a tiny bit. And then I'll just secrete my end into the, the seam, I think. So if you pull your end, it will just sort of hide in there. And then I'm just going to come up and I'm coming from my underside without bits of fluff, hopefully. And I'm just going to do, these are just the little overcast or whip stitches um, that are great for just finishing off uh, an edge. This is the technique that I used managing to catch my hair into it. I did purposely leave a few um, Travis bits of fur. I hope in the future if someone's um, taking this apart, um, they can find a bit of my hair, a bit of Travis hair, and we can we can be brought back. <laughs> but I don't know if I actually want to be brought back in the future. Who knows what the future will be like. Sometimes I do despair a bit about the way that the, the world is going. If only everyone could be nice. Kind, actually, rather than just nice, um, kind, kindness, compassion for each other, for fellow human beings. I think if you kind of put yourself in other people's shoes and think about, yeah, how would it feel if I was, then you'd, you'd hope people would take a different, different approach. And those of us in places where we're safe and have shelter and food and 
the basics of life. Um, yeah, we've been lucky to find ourselves in this this existence, haven't we? It's it's there, but for like to be yeah to be having those circumstances when there's so many in different parts of the world that don't have those circumstances. We are incredibly fortunate. And that's not to say that life isn't isn't hard and that there aren't sort of yeah challenges people have and as we all know cost of living and things like that that's definitely getting getting harder and tougher for folks so it's not not sort of not denying that but we are most of us are incredibly fortunate with what we do actually have that's just my heavy thought for Monday where did that call you that came from because I said bring Travis and I back from our our third left in stitchery projects in fact on the news this week I think there's a facility in Victoria where the first person has been cryogenically um, frozen and preserved even though the science obviously isn't there yet to be able to bring people back and whether it will ever be there but people are investing and paying the paying the fees with the hope that maybe one day they can be be brought back interesting okay so um there is the bottom piece and so yeah basically when i put it in um i usually just put it in like that sorry my belly is grumbling it has decided that crafting rather than eating lunch um <laughs> might not be the right idea no it's all right i had a late breakfast had some crumpets with with honey um so yeah i think that's going to work well but yeah if you did want to um it would be very much the same sort of technique that you would use to stitch your um bottom piece on i can just show you but then i will be taking it out because i kind of like the idea also that this could fold and um yeah travel with me if i was going somewhere but yeah you could basically just do a very similar process again i would probably hide my tail sort of in the seam and then just work your way along and just do little um, overcast stitches. I'd probably use one of my longer needles as well because that will just help you be able to get through. But you just work your way all around um, putting your little stitches in. But I will take mine out because I don't think I'm going to actually need them. So let me put my pin back in my um, thing. So if you didn't want to and let me go bring my I'll bring you back up again so close your eyes if you don't like watching the moving of the thing if you didn't want to make all your own hexagons or clamshells or other shapes um, I was very lucky on the weekend to pick up a entire doona cover and two pillowcases with um, someone else's vintage uh, patchworking on it and as I was um, looking at it I thought yeah you could absolutely um, use existing patchworking and if you have vintage or even just pieces that might have got worn like this one is actually worn in some um, sections and coming away maybe not on maybe not on this one um, but yeah perfect for, for cutting it out you could make your house just choose to make it the size of um, a set of blocks for example you could make it um, that size you could just sort of yeah pick it by the the design what you wanted if you wanted to because I guess on this design that we're looking at you have a square there and a square there actually no it doesn't that's not an exact square is it yeah it might have been made from from strips I was thinking it would be totally symmetrical but then this one is a middle strip and then another middle strip yeah, it's only that one that's actually like a full full cross in the middle so it's actually it's a design that's coming out from the center isn't it yep worked it out um, so yeah you could sort of yeah make it based on that so in fact if I did it I'd probably actually do it this area here because then you'd actually have your um, similar section or if you were doing it over here yeah you just want to work out what you want sometimes you might be happy with the random effect as well um, and then you could again just back that onto your card and your felt so 
So now I've got two pillowcases and then I've got a massive Duna cover and I got that on Facebook Marketplace from 900 metres down the road. Can you believe how close it was? Um, and it was $10 for the entire lot and it's beautifully um, soft and worn. As I say, there's a few bits where it's sort of, yeah, giving, giving away, um, but it's going to be perfectly fabulous for cutting up and using in my um, stick tree projects. I could always stitch it up and use it as a doona cover but we have plenty of doona covers and I did get it for for crafting purposes. So that was a very good find. Um, if you've been watching my channel you would have also seen I got some beautiful vintage feed sack um, quilts. Um, scrappy ones because they're all sort of um, yeah the edges are all worn but again this would be fab fabulous more for that sort of I guess crazy quilty look because it's not um, uniform fabrics but yeah wouldn't that make a beautiful colorful house design got another one that is more crazy quilty style and that they're not squares they're triangles all different shapes um, bigger blocks so you might just end up using parts of two blocks for example and another crazy quilty one and again you could just cut out your your sections of it and it would be a yeah a really really fun box you can also get um, patchwork sort of styled um, fabrics that look like patchwork but aren't um, this one's more a Japanesey sort of well it makes me think of Japanesey style um, but yeah you could use a section of this and it would be really really beautiful I have plenty of it actually so I could even make myself a, a box out of this and if you didn't want to do the house shape box um, you could just make your four walls rectangles and then just have a lid um, that sits on it you'd probably then have the lid joined hinged onto it um, but again I would always make my lid just slightly bigger as I did with the, the roof um, so that it does actually have a bit of a little bit of overlap like that that you can see there so, sorry it's slipping but yeah a bit of overlap at each end um, the only other thing I'd say, and this was just something that I kind of noticed and which I'll probably put a couple of extra stitches in, is just um, bending this down so it really does meet um, where the roof line is. So just bending it down and putting a stitch in just so that the roof um, sits totally, totally flat on it. But yeah, I just love the little dingle bell. Um, the, yeah, the front of the house is incredibly cute. Reminds me of a little fairy cottage or something or a little gingerbread house. Um, just, yeah, really, really thrilled with how this all came together. Um, also, just with this little lace detailing that sits under where the clamshells are. I didn't end up sewing these. I just sewed down the, the two sides. So you could even have a little secret place to put a little, little note or something. Um, so likewise there and that's just got the, the fabric lining it and with the bell I just used a sharper needle to put a hole through and then use my thicker needle to bring um, the yarn with this through and that was some of that yarn that I got recently at the Embroidery Victoria D stash market so um, I don't think I need to yeah show you too much else today for that but do ask me any questions um, yeah you can make it whatever size you want I'll take the bottom out um, basically yeah two rectangle sides and then measure a piece at the end whatever width you want it across um, work out what pitch you want on your your roof you can make it all out of cardboard first or even just out of paper check that the template looks the way you want it to and then as I say I'd suggest making your base piece once you've um, finished stitching it together just so you can get it the exact size you want particularly if you want to just have it as a little um, insertable piece um, rather than having to stitch it on and with your roof make it um, wider across this way and longer down this way um, so that it will actually uh, stay and um, have some overlap and not have not have gaps and then as I was just mentioning I will just be putting a stitch in just to hold these end of the wall bits just so they're sitting a bit further down and the roof doesn't then sort of yeah sit up at a weird angle 
So I hope you've enjoyed following along with that project. It's going to be exciting this week to get our month of June prompt. So the last of this six month um, series with Roxy's Journal of Stitchery. But I know they're going to give us a um, project for the rest of the year, which will be very exciting to find out. So thanks again to Sarah and Rachel and Juju for hosting this really, really fun project. I always have such a ball. And thank you to all of you for your encouragement, your comments, your ideas, your thoughts. Um, just love chatting with you in the in the comments um, and really appreciate yeah all the support that you provide so I'll pop some footage at the end if you want to see our little beach excursion yesterday um, and otherwise take care have a wonderful week folks bye